Welcome to UCTV News. I'm Julia Gorman. And I'm Ryan Kim. We begin tonight with more on our coverage of the death of UConn professor Dr. Pierluigi Bagazzi. NBC Connecticut reports UConn has recovered over $50,000 in payroll money given to the professor since the time of his death. The total of $50,040 has been repaid to the university through the attorney for the wife of Dr. Bagazzi, who has been charged in her husband's death. The repayment goes all the way back to checks dated from August 4, 2017. Yukon Health is going public, or so it hopes. The Hartford Current reports Yukon Health released a report detailing plans to pursue a private-public partnership for long-term sustainability on Monday. The health center increased revenue and avoided seeking deficit funding from the state. The complex sustained cuts in state funding of $16.9 million this year, despite growth in patient volume and increased market share in Farmington Valley. Any partnership agreement must be approved by the Yukon Health Board of Directors and the Yukon Board of Trustees. April is Sexual Assault Awareness, Mo Awareness and Prevention Month, rather, and Yukon is making sure to back the cause. Yukon will be hosting various events throughout the month, including Catwalk and Denim Day. This month has been recognized since 2001, but President Trump made this month the official Sexual Assault Awareness Month on March 28th, according to CNN. For more information on UConn's events, visit womenscenter.uconn.edu. The Lady Huskies finished out their season this weekend. The UConn women's basketball team lost against Notre Dame on Saturday, 91-89. to The women have been in the Final Four for a record 11 years in a row. Notre Dame won the national championship against Mississippi State on Sunday. And, you know, it's really tough for them because, you know, for being so great, having those 11 national championships, losing to that buzzer beater two years in a row in has a row. to be just, uh, must be a terrible feeling for Ugh. them. Better luck next year. Absolutely. Now we move up to catch up with the rest of Connecticut. The Connecticut Post reported Monday that Democratic Congresswoman Elizabeth Esty will not seek re-election for her fourth term. Before this, Esty let go of her former Chief of Staff Tony Baker for their sexual harassment of her aide, Amanda Kane. She also gave Baker a $5,000 severance package funded by taxpayers. She says she will not resign after failing to gather support of party members from both sides of the aisle. Along with other congressmen, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy said, the decision she made today is the right one for her. A four-month-old baby has been reported missing in the Bristol area. Authorities believe the child, Symphony Hannah, may be in the company of her father, who has issued a no-contact protective order. Police say she may be in danger as the child's father has a domestic violence history. Snapchat being used for violence? That's what happened at Vinyl Technical School in Middletown before a teen was arrested Monday. A parent reported that their child received three messages through Snapchat that implied violence towards the school. According to Connecticut State Police, investigators responded to the sender's home where the student admitted to sending the messages. And State Trooper Kevin Miller was killed in a tractor-trailer accident on I-84 in Tallinn last Thursday. I-84 exits 68 to 69 were closed for over eight hours as police investigated the crash. According to NBC Connecticut, the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner determined Miller died of a blunt impact injury to the head. Miller was a 19-year member of the Connecticut State Police and father of two. A funeral will take place on Friday, April 6th at 11 a.m. at Pratt & Whitney Stadium at Rentschler Field. So really tragic news to hear about another official in the press who was tragically killed in an accident. I feel like we've been hearing about that a lot. Absolutely. You know, the past couple of months, you know, really since the start of 2018, I feel like there's been a lot of notable people in the news that have, you know, been, been killed way too soon uh, due to tragedy. But, of course, we always wish their families the best of luck Absolutely. and wish them well moving forward. Next up, we move to talk about events in the rest of the country. The man responsible for killing four people and injuring several others in a drunk driving car crash in 2013 was released from jail on Monday. According to NPR, Ethan Couch drew national attention when his legal team argued that his privileged upbringing was a factor in the tragic accident. He was sentenced to eight years jail time after violating his probation in response to the 2013 accident. Couch's attorney said he will serve what is left of his six-year sentence 
under community supervision. A 13-year-old boy spent his Easter Sunday trapped in the Los Angeles sewer system. Jesse Hernandez fell through the flooring of an abandoned building, landing inside the sewage pipes of LA. The Bureau of Sanitation and the Los Angeles Fire Department fished cameras through the pipes looking for signs of the boy. At 4 a.m., the fire department spotted smeared handprints that led them in the right direction. Hernandez was finally rescued around 5.30 a.m. after being trapped for 12 hours. The New York Times reports that thousands of teachers have walked off the job in Oklahoma and Kentucky. This strike was sparked by cuts in pay, benefits, and school funding. The series of strikes began in West Virginia earlier this year. Teachers took to the streets surrounding the Capitol, chanting, No funding, no future, on Monday morning. So great to see teachers standing up for what they believe in. I hope they get what they're looking for and protesting for. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just the teachers, though. I mean, you know, we got to think, you know, over the past couple of weeks, there's been those protests for gun violence. And it's really great to see the, the, the United States community kind of, you know, standing up and exercising their beliefs for what they really believe in, what they should get. Absolutely. Next up, we talk politics in the United States. According to the New York Times, adult film actress Stephanie Clifford, otherwise known as Stormy Daniels, is being forced to settle her disputes with President Trump through private arbitration instead of a classic lawsuit. Arbitration is a private process where a third party resolves the disputes after all parties agree on a decision, whereas a lawsuit would be public and could present private information during the discovery process and the trial. Clifford was paid $130,000 to stay quiet about her claimed affair with President Trump. She recently sued to get out of the non-disclosure agreement that she signed back in October of 2016. After Donald Trump posted a string of tweets talking about immigration on Monday, the Trump administration is pursuing another push on immigration. One of the president's tweets said, No more DACA deal, the deal that provides legal status for immigrants brought to America as children. No officials have verified this tweet. The Trump administration plans to push Congress to reduce the number of undocumented immigrants, particularly the ones crossing the border from Central America. And that does it for us tonight here at UCTV News. Be sure to check out our YouTube at UCTV Channel 14 and tune in next Tuesday for another edition of UCTV News. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Oh, my God.